and I'll hand the mic over to Lisa. Thank you. All right. Hi, guys. Can you guys hear me okay? I'll have to get used to this thing. Um, I think I might put this here for now. All right, guys. So, hello, my name is Lisa. Thank you all so much for being here, for coming out on your Saturday morning to come listen to us speak. I hope you guys learned something. Um, so just before we get started, one of the things that I work on with my clients is a lot of behavior change and habits. Um, I used to, when I was a, a younger dietitian, <laughs> I used to give people a seven-day nutrition plan, and I'll say, okay, here you go, here's your seven days, this is exactly what you're supposed to eat, I'll see you in four weeks. And what ended up happening was that they'd be really, really excited about it for one week, and then after four weeks, they would kind of fall off, and then, oh, it's too hard. I just wasn't getting good, um, I guess, client feedback. And I was kind of even disappointed. I was like, God, maybe I shouldn't even be doing nutrition. This is not really working that well. So I started digging a little deeper. And, you know, throughout the past 10 years, I've experimented with different methods. Um, and also, I've gone through my own nutrition battles as well. So the, when we're going to speak about the power of nutrition, I'd like to speak about the habits and actually how, how we do that. All right. So... If I were to tell you guys, I have this magic pill, right? I have it right here, and it's going to make you feel better. You're going to have more energy. Um, you're going to have mental clarity. You're not going to have any brain fog. Your digestion system is going to work excellent. You're just going to be like this, like this powerhouse of a man or woman, All right? How many of us would take this magic substance? Okay, and what if I were to tell you, but you guys have to take it every single day. You have to take it three times a day, but we take it. Yes. Yeah, we all, we all want to take it, of course. All right, so what do you think this magic substance is? Okay, it's food, yeah. Big surprise. Okay? <laughs> it's food, okay? So every piece of food, every, everything we put in our mouth, guys, affects us how we feel. And some of us may not be as sensitive to it, right? But if we drink a cup of coffee in the morning, do we feel anything from it? If it's a good, high quality? Okay, some of us don't. <laughs> some of us don't. Okay, who does feel something from coffee? Right? You feel like, I feel it. I drank some this morning. You feel a little jittery. Well, that's actually how we feel from food. We feel differently when we're eating a piece of lettuce. We feel differently when we're eating a protein. We feel differently when we're combining all those three macronutrients together. But a lot of us just don't realize how big of an impact food actually has on us. All right? And with that magic pill, wouldn't it make sense that every meal that we want to choose is going to be beneficial for us, right? If, I, if we have a baby in front of us, right, don't you want to give that baby, like, just the absolute best food, everything organic, high-quality nutrients, right? We want to give that baby the best. We should, we should look at us. We should look at our bodies the same exact way, right? We have to take care of our bodies. So the question is, why don't we? Why don't we do these things on an everyday basis, all right? That's... That's the big question. See, like that's a brain. How cool is that? See, I thought that was a cool picture. Um, so we're, we're going to get into why don't we do it. And most of, us, most of us, guys, we know the difference between what's healthy and what's not healthy, right? We know that bag, a bag of chips is not healthy. We know that vegetables are healthy. Okay, great. And most of us here, I would imagine, we know where our next meal is coming from. So we're not, we're not suffering or faced with food insecurity. Right, so food insecurity is when I, I'm so hungry and I don't know where my next meal is coming from, right? Most of us are privileged enough where we know, well, I can either buy a meal, or I can go home, I can go to my friend's house, right? We don't have to face that. So it is up to us to decide what we put on our bodies. And the best thing, obviously, is to put whole, unprocessed food on our bodies, right? So why, this is, I can ask you guys a question, why is processed food not the most beneficial for us? You guys can yell out some answers. It lacks nutrients, number one, yeah. What else? It's what? Sodium, yeah. It's just, it's crappy food. Why would we choose to put that food into our body, right? That's something I want you guys to begin thinking about before every single meal that you take, every, every um, bite of food that you take, all right? So choosing whole unprocessed food is ideal. Now, who has heard also abs are made in the kitchen, right? It's like so annoying. You're like, all right, shut up. All right, abs are made, you know, you're working out in here, you know, I don't know, 10 hours a week, abs are made in the kitchen. Or why, do, have you guys heard that one too? 80% of weight loss or fat loss is going to happen, um, you know, by your food, by your food intake, or maybe 70, right? You guys have heard that too. 
Well, the reason you guys have heard those is because that's the actual truth, right? So we come in here and we work out, or you come, you know, wherever you're working out, you're running outside, and that lasts about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, right? And then you maybe you do that once a day. But most of us have to eat every single day. Most of us are eating three times a day, four times a day. So every time we eat, we have this opportunity to fuel our body with good food, nutritious food that's going to make us feel better, right? So the workout is good, and it's going to make us feel, but we, but we don't have to work out every day. We're not going to die if we don't work out every day. But we're going to really feel the effects if we're not eating for one full day. We're going to be hungry, all right? So... This is why that 80% is so important because this is what we are constantly doing. We're constantly eating, right? We're constantly putting things in our body. And our body, if you guys know, if you guys feel your body, right? Your body's alive. You're not a rock. Even rocks have, you know, certain energy. But that's a different, but uh, <laughs> and plants. But we're alive, guys. Our body can do amazing things. We, you know, we come out this big and we end up growing. Our body's constantly changing. Our bodies constantly, we can lose weight, we can put weight on, we can change what our cells are doing, we can heal. Our bodies are constantly changing. So the food that you put into your body, in your cells, affects every single cell in your body. That's, that's how important it is. So I just want to make sure you guys understand the magnitude of it. All right. So going back to our, um, you know, why, why don't we put these healthy foods in our body? Well, we're attached to food. How would you feel if I said, all right, guys, so... For the next year, you're not allowed to touch any alcohol, any coffee, and any bread. You'd get upset, right? <laughs> you get upset. But why? Why are you so upset? Are you going to die? Are you going to get sick from not eating those foods? In reality, no, nothing's going to happen to you. You're okay. You're going to survive. This is just, I just named three things, but these are the things that we're attached to, right? We're emotionally attached to them, and some of us are even physically attached to them. If you've ever maybe tried to come off of coffee, you might get a headache. Um, you know, if you're used to drinking every single day, hopefully not, but if you are, at one time you were, you know, coming off that is not easy. Or if you're used to having a piece of bread every day, even though, you know, you know, you know it's not the best thing, but you've been doing it since you are a kid, and it's just, it's just what you do, okay? We're attached to food. I'm attached to food. I'm attached to my coffee. Take whatever you want away from me, but I want my coffee. I'll starve the whole day, but I just, I want my cup of coffee in the morning, all right? I know that about myself. And these habits that we have are also already in place. So a lot of clients that I have, well, I always go to this place and I get this. So I always go to... Um, in the morning, and I get my pastelito and my coffee, or whatever it is, right? And those things are hard, they're hard to break for people. And also, when we say diet, which I hate, I really do not like the word diet, it's right away, people are like, oh, okay, I'm going to be starving. All right, you're going to take this away from me. I'm not going to be able to eat. So right away, there's a negative connotation with it, and we want to turn that around. So that's why I think, like, the macros have done well with people because, like, hey, if you want to have half a cup of chocolate or, I mean, whatever, that's a lot, half a cup of chocolate ice cream, <laughs> you can still have it, but as long as you're hitting your macros, you're okay. This is why that flexible dieting has taken off, I, I believe, in the past few years because we're getting more flexible with what we can do. And our diets don't just mean chicken, broccoli, and rice, because that's boring, right? Nobody wants to do that. And then the reality is, if you're working with a good dietitian, right, yes, you might have to take away some things, but you're really taking away some inflammatory foods or maybe food that you're addicted to. You're getting rid of those attachments, and you're replacing it with other things. So it's not like, I don't tell people, okay, we're taking it away. We're going to replace it with different things. So that's, that's one major thing of how you break a habit. All right, the other part that I deal with all the time is just the resistance, okay? So, again, what are we talking about when, when I say, okay, let's eat the most, the most healthy food you can. What's preventing you from doing it? So, the number one thing is availability, right? Is it available to us? And I'm going to say, too, in Miami right now where we live, in this area, we pretty much have everything available to us that we want. We can go to Whole Foods and buy foods, you know, from the other side of the world, we can buy blueberries, berries that might not even be in season right now. Um, we can go to Publix, we can go buy chicken, pork, like everything is available to us right now in this country, or in this city at least, okay? The biggest thing is priorities. So if nutrition and fueling yourself is not a priority, you're not going to do it. So what do you think, you guys can call out some answers too, what usually takes precedence over, let's say, over in your life? So instead of like, instead of cooking and prepping this meal, what's more important to you in your day? What has to get done? 
Client calls? Okay, client calls, what else? What do you have to do every single day? Work, duh, yes. M maybe drop off your kids, feed your kid. You know, once you have a kid, like that's it, you gotta take care of that thing, you know? Like that's, you just, <laughs> that's it, right? <laughs> You're kind of like on the back burner for a little bit. <laughs> Like, it's priority, so like, Mike has a new baby. He has to wake up in the middle of the night to feed the baby, because if he doesn't feed the baby, that baby's gonna be crying. You have to do certain things in your schedule. They just, they have to get done. So what we want to do is get the priority of feeding yourself, of nourishing yourself, to be right on top with work and the kids and everything else. We want that priority to be a part of your everyday life. And if it's not right now, you can begin working on it. And if it already is, then fantastic. I'm sure we could still do things to improve your health. But it's about making that a priority. And I have clients all different ages, and they have kids, they don't have kids, they have parents that they have to take care of. But it's just about making that priority for yourself, putting yourself first. That's one of the things. And of course, we have life events. So we have life events where, you know, for two weeks you might be traveling, or you did have a new baby, or you have something going on in your life where, like, Food might be the last thing you're thinking about. And that could be okay for a temporary amount of time, but you can't let that drag on for five years, for 10 years, where then you're not even an important person in your own life, right? You're just taking care of everybody else. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna talk a little bit about just the contents of food and macros. So macros is just a short term for macronutrients, right? So macronutrients, are the big nutrients we eat, and then micronutrients, nobody really calls them micros, but. Uh, but the micronutrients are our vitamins and minerals, and our macronutrients are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So every single thing you eat is made up of, of these guys. It's, it's either a carbohydrate, it's either a protein, or it's either a fat, or some foods may have all three macronutrients. Can somebody tell me a food that has all three macronutrients? It's like a pop quiz. Milk? Mm hmm let me, I was like, let me think about that, yes. <laughs> yeah, so people, th or like in, something like an egg, it doesn't have all three, but people think, oh, an egg has fat in it, but it also has protein in it. Nuts, nuts have protein, nuts have fat, and they have carbohydrates, something people forget about. Oh, nuts don't have carbs or fat. No, they have carbohydrates too, all right? So in an ideal situation, we want to be getting our carbs, our fats, and proteins in at every single meal. Right? And we're going we're gonna to see what that looks like. But that's the I ideal situation. Now, we're not talking about if you have any kind of like food sensitivities or things like that. We're just talking about in an ideal situation if you're a healthy person. And our micronutrients are also very important, but they're on a much smaller scale. So they're vitamins and minerals. We're going to do questions after, guys. Okay? All right. Thank you. Okay. So this is... And again, this is one example. Don't get all huffy. Oh, well, that's not what I eat. Okay, we're going to talk about that later on. But this is an ideal meal, right? We have four ounces of protein, about four ounces, let's say it's just the palm of a hand. And this is more for a woman. I know, guys, you might want a little bit more. Half a cup of some kind of comp complex carbohydrates, like a sweet potato. Um, one to two cups of vegetables, maybe fresh, fresh vegetables or something that you grilled or sauteed. And maybe one to two tablespoons of fat. Now, some of that fat might actually be in the protein that you're eating because even if you're eating a like chicken breast, it's going to have a small amount of fat in it. That's just what it has. Or you're adding something extra on it like an olive oil or an avocado. But the, the combination of these foods is what helps us to feel good. It's, it's going to keep us clear. And it's going to digest probably in our, properly in our digestive system. So one of my clients said, it's about, like, it's about staying on the wagon for her. So now she's working with me. We've been working together for months and months. And she's like, you know, I think now it's about, she got this down. She knows how to eat this. But now she's like, now it's just about staying on my wagon. I'm traveling this weekend. I'm going here. I had a spring break. And it's just about staying on that wagon and being consistent with it. You can eat like this for a day or two or three, you're, and you're going to feel great. But it has to be consistent. Right? It has to be something that you can do for the next year, for the next five years, for the next 10 years. What can you do where you can eat in this way that it feels good for you and it's consistent? All right? So staying on the wagon. I liked, I liked that she said that. So here's another infographic. And I use this infographic all the time. I don't use the, 
Oh, is the American Dietetic Association one? <laughs> they have a new name now. But I, I like this one, all right? And again, it's not, a, it's not the ideal one, but it's, it's a great one. So we have a little bit of organic protein. We have healthy fats. We have a low glycemic carbs or a complex carb. And then we have a lot of vegetables. How many of you guys eat that many vegetables at each meal? Okay, yeah, like five people. Good, good for you guys. <laughs> the rest of us there are not maybe eating that. And I'm gonna, I don't eat that amount of vegetables at every single meal. No, maybe like at lunch and dinner, maybe at lunch, but not, not every single time, right? So our, we have our vegetables, our protein, our healthy fats, which are amazing, and then we have our carbs. But every one of these macronutrients, right, every one of these has, it, it serves a purpose. So the protein, if you're working out, it's going to help repair your tissue. It's going to make you feel full, right? You're going to, ha you're going to not be hungry after it. The vegetables have nutrients. They, they have fiber. They're going to fill you up, and they're full of antioxidants. Your carbs are also going to increase your insulin levels a little bit, increase your blood sugar to make you feel like you're actually full, right? And also they're going to have fiber. And then your healthy fats are also responsible for making sure you're um, producing certain hormones and also making sure that you're feeling full throughout the day. So if, let's say if you just ate the protein, you're not going to have the same effect than if you're eating all of these macronutrients together. Has anybody seen this guy before, this, um, this infographic before? No? It's great. Obviously, I like it. Um, so this is just what we went over. So I want you guys to look at the macronutrients, not just for the dietary purpose of it, of saying, okay, well, yeah, I need my carbs, I need this, I need that, but looking at them from a more nutritional standpoint of view, right? Like, what is it actually doing to my body? If I'm eating this piece of protein, what is it actually doing? What are the benefits that I'm getting out of it? That's how I want you guys to begin looking at your food, not just saying, oh, yeah, I got to eat this crap, and then, you know, hopefully I'll lose weight in two months, all right? I want you actually to in invest your time into it. All right. So we got that. I know I should be eating protein. I should be eating vegetables. But where do I start? What the heck am I supposed to do? And I remember being in this position. <clears throat> I started really studying nutrition when I was 16, before I was in college. But then my freshman year, I gave my freshman 10. Not 15, but about 10. We'll just say 10, all right? And I grew up in a house where my mom always had fitness magazines. You know, I was, always, I was pretty much in good shape. But I would always see these fitness magazines, and I would read them. And, you know, the girls are good. Now that I know that they were just posing and that they were dieting before, like not everybody looks like that every single day. I didn't know that as an 18-year-old. But I would read what they say, and it would say, four ounces of protein, make sure you're eating vegetables. And as a freshman in a dorm room, I was like, how, how do I do that? Like my friends don't eat like that. My friends are going to firehouse subs in Chipotle, and they're drinking beer, and they're, we're going to frat party. I'm like, but and these people are working out and they're eating like little small meals. I'm like, how, how do they people do it? I don't know how to actually do it. So, and I would ask other people. I would ask people in my gym. There was one girl that was competing and she was a senior. And I was like, what do you do? She goes, you got to eat your vegetables. I was like, God, everybody keeps saying the same thing. And I was like, so I just, it's like I didn't know how to actually apply it. So then I got a steamer, you know, and I tried to do my best. But it wasn't until later on I actually had an apartment I can cook and I can actually, I could actually do these things, do these things that I'm actually teaching my clients now. And the other thing is how long, you know, how long, how much time do you have? Are you getting ready for a wedding because you want to fit in a dress or are you actually looking to change your habits, right? Four weeks, I'd say, I, I had eight on there originally. I was like, let me, all right, let me, let me put four just so it's like a little more realistic for people. But four weeks, guys, of consistency is your minimum, really. You can't eat good for one week and expect, you know, that to last for the rest of the year. You'll feel great. If you start eating well for one week, for one day, you're still going to feel good. But you can't go back to your old habits. It's not going to happen. You have to be consistent. This is where those habits come in. We change the habits so that your brain becomes actually begins to make those connections, those decisions automatically, all right? And you also have, need to have realistic expectations. I did, um, I was doing macros, <laughs> and then, I know, I saw these, you know, you see the best on Instagram. You see, like, the best before pictures and after, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, and I did it, like, 80%, maybe, right? I didn't even do 100, but I was like, oh, by, by the end of these eight weeks, I, I'm going to be shredded. Like, this is what I expect because this is what I see. So I didn't lose any weight <laughs> doing it. 
I lost nothing. I was the same exact weight. Now, I felt better. I was eating better. I got a little leaner, but the actual weight loss, I was like, what the what the heck, man, nothing's happening. This doesn't work, you know? But that's not only, right, our scale is not the only thing we're looking at, right? So you actually have to commit to it and do it for a long time, and you, your expectations have to be realistic. The guys that you see, like bodybuilding with the 2 3% body fat, that's, that's not realistic to walk around, you know, the whole year around. That's why they have, like, an off-season and an on-season. But so much of what we see is like, well, yeah, I expect to be like that all the time. I want to die for three weeks, and I'm going to be, you know, a fitness model. So that's the dental is, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, okay? One thing where you can start, which is going to, thank you, Eric. One thing that where you can start, and this is going to really make you aware of what you're eating, is do a food diary. And if that scares you already, then you need to go deeper and you actually need to do it. But if you're like, oh, yeah, sure, I can do that. That's fine. Or other people might be panicking in their head, like, oh, my God, I have to write down what am I going to eat. So you can do a food diary or my fitness pal. You, just writing it down is already going to make you more aware. You can share it with somebody. You can share it with me or with Eric. Or you can even share it with your friends. Or even in my fitness pal, you'll be able to see, oh, my God, I'm eating 200, gram 200 grams of carbs in a day. And I'm only, you know, five feet. Like, a, maybe I shouldn't be eating that many carbs. All right? Or maybe, oh, my God, I'm way under eating. I'm not eating enough. I'm eating one meal a day. So that you have to bring that awareness into, um, into your field. Also changing habits. Like, this meal prep stuff, like, I, I, don't, I really don't like seeing pictures like this. Because as soon as people think meal prep, they think this boring stuff right here. Like, okay, chicken and broccoli and rice every single day for the rest of the week, right? It doesn't have to be like that. That's boring. I don't like it. I get turned off by that. I just, you know, it's, I don't, it's, it's not something that we want. It's not something that we look forward to, okay? But it's learning the habits. It's learning how to cook, or if you know how to cook. Um, getting new tools, you know, maybe investing in some different equipment. I got this like Zoodle maker on Amazon for $30. It's amazing. I've been making my sweet potatoes with it. It's like the most coolest thing ever. Um, researching recipes, right? So a lot of times you're like, okay, well, give me all the recipes. Why don't you look, maybe look on Pinterest or my, maybe you should look at a cookbook and see what actually excites you, right? Look at the ingredients. I, I, maybe it's just me, but like I love looking on Pinterest. I love looking at YouTube. I like to see how people are actually doing the things. They turn on the food channel. All right, and then also meal prepping. But meal prepping does not have to be obvious like that. Um, another option is using somebody like Perfect Fuel, right? So something that is, it's a great tool to teach people what food should look like, right? So whoever got the little bowls, I saw like the bowls, like that's, that's what your meal should look like. It should be full of vegetables. It should be full of different kind of vegetables, right? It's a good visual to see because you're like, oh, this is what it's supposed to look like. And then you can recreate it at home if you want. Planning for the whole week, I don't mean prepping for the whole week, but planning for the week, saying, okay, let's say if I have a whole week and I have to feed four people in my family, um, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to eat chicken and this, and then the rest of the week I'm going to make a different protein. These are the carbs, these are the veggies. But just planning ahead so that you know where you're going to be cooking or you know where your meals are going to be coming from. This is a big one too, having go-to meals. So... You're on the road, and let's say you don't have anything with you. Oh, crap. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Are you going to go to McDonald's? I hope not. <laughs> don't go there. Um, well, so what's a good go-to place? Maybe Starbucks. Maybe you always get the protein box at Starbucks, right? Maybe you go to Whole Foods, and you already know that, okay, yes, I know that chicken, and I get the garlicky kale, and I get the rice, right? That's what I get. That's what I like. So picking out those go-to places that are easy for you to go so you don't have to think about it. The more we have to think about these decisions in our mind is what's going to make us go crazy and get frustrated and give up. So it's making those meals, kind of laying out those paths, knowing what those places are so, so that we have, so it makes it easy for us. And having go-to places to eat. Like I know when I go to eat, I'm always, I always get like some kind of uh, sashimi tuna because I don't make that at home, but I know I can always get that at a restaurant. I know I can always get a salad, and that's just, you know, my preference. So having things where you can prepare ahead of time and knowing ahead of time. Um, and to kind of finish off here, choosing meals for their nutritional value like we talked about. And I heard this yesterday or somewhere, I forgot where it was, but like let's say you want this bite of food really, really bad, 
but you want to keep going. Like that bite of food, that pleasure from that bite of food only lasts about like 10 seconds. So if you want to cheat with that ice cream, let's say you maybe eat that ice cream in five minutes and then you feel crappy about it, like that pleasure is gone within five minutes. Like that's it. It's over. Was it really worth it? You know, you can ask yourself that. Having variety in your meals, so not eating the same thing over and over again. And the big thing, I, I love this one because this is, I've been experiencing or experimenting with this myself, is actual hunger versus cravings, right? When, when was the last time you were actually legitimately hungry? You're like, oh my God, I need to eat right now, right? Or I'm going to pass out. Versus just being at home being like, oh yeah, I want some chips or yeah, I want some of this or I'm bored or I'm stressed out, let me, let me grab this, right? This is all, all things we go through. So knowing the difference between that and also knowing when you're actually full. A lot of times we want to like shove food into our mouth until we feel full right away. But wait 20 minutes, you know, eat 75% of your meal, wait 20 minutes, and then you will actually be full if weight loss is your, if your goal, is your goal, right? If you're gaining weight and you want to increase the muscle, yeah, you'll probably have to, you know, eat a little bit more. Um, this is, you know, one other aspect of it, but people have, people do have food intolerances, and this is something that's, this is very personalized, but ideally after you eat, guys, you should feel energetic. I like to say, I, I should feel like I should be able to work out within the next hour or two, right? I don't want to be so full that I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm done for the day. I, I just, I just need to go to sleep at this point. Um, and food intolerances like skin irritations, feeling sleepy, bloating, brain frog, inflammation, this is all things that come from food. Because remember, food is what we're inputting into our bodies every single day. So we can, you know, discuss later on um, what to pull out. But things like gluten, dairy, um, eggs, things like that usually cause intolerances. So what can you do today? <laughs> you can begin, right? You can begin your research. You can begin experimenting. Um, bringing awareness to actually what you're eating, right? And just, just that awareness, that, that intention is going to be enough in the beginning just to get you a little bit motivated. Start making improvements, cooking different meals, and experiment, guys. You have, you know, ut utilize your body, your, your N of one, right? Your, your number one. Utilize your body, try different things. Um, you know, it is obviously better to seek uh, a professional to make sure you're going to do something extreme, but just don't be afraid to try things. If you want to try intermittent fasting, try it for one day. See what happens. All right, guys? Okay, so that's it. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>